Alright guys, so this is the uh, Beta FPV Light Radio 2. You guys have probably seen some postings on this on uh, Facebook, Instagram, various other places. I posted a photo of this a long time ago on my Instagram. I've had this for a while and I've been using it on and off. Um, it is a beginner radio. It's not meant for uh, someone that's been using a traditional transmitter and replacing it with this. this is, um, it's hobby grade. It's probably low end budget hobby grade, obviously for $30. There's not much I can't say to not recommend this because it does have real gimbals. These are pretty good. There's a little bit of jitter, a little bit of dead zone. It's barely noticeable, but it's a real gimbal, unlike a lot of other transmitters in this price range. In the $30 price range, they're all like, you know, um, game style. Uh, controller joysticks and they're pretty bad with a really huge dead zone. This is not the case. The gimbals are not super smooth. They're a little on the rough side. Um, but the travel is predictable. The movements are predictable. I mean, you can kind of hear, you know, it makes, it does make a little bit of strange noise. It's not super smooth. It's not hall, hall thick gimbals or anything like that. This is 30 bucks here. So Keep that in mind. It's very light. It's about 180 grams. Uh, runs off of two 1S batteries that are on the back here. You have to charge them outside. So mine came with uh, 300 milliamp hour batteries with the uh, BT 2.0 connector, but one of them, one of the batteries was dead. So I swapped this out for PH 2.0 batteries, and just uses a looks like a 2S servo connector or balance lead connector there. Um, so I just swapped that to PH uh, to the BT 2.0 connectors for PH 2.0 connectors because uh, one of my BT 2.0 batteries was no was not working out of the box. Um, but that's how that runs. You have to you do have to take them out to charge them. Um, I get about 45 50 minutes of um, on time usage on these batteries. Obviously, if you put some different batteries in there, it might get more. And you might be able to put a 2S battery in there instead. That'll fit like a 450, for example. I haven't tried any of the batteries, but if you want to get more more um, power on time than, let's say, about 45, 50 minutes, I think they were advertising like an hour, hour and 10 minutes, but for me, it's like 45, 50 minutes. So, um, yeah, not super long um, uh, power on time, and it does not charge via USB. So that's a, kind of a downside, but again, it's $30. The USB does um, plug into your computer. It will function as a USB joystick, so you can use that for simulators for sure. That'd be great. And then it has to have an audio jack here for using the um, this radio as a trainer radio or, or student radio. So you plug this in here and, and plug in an audio jack into a you know a bigger transmitter that has all the functions for using trainer mode. And then you could use this for a student radio. Um, obviously, again, targeted towards beginners. And so this is going to be perfect for that for someone if you want to uh, help them learn how to fly. You could put this into trainer mode and uh, use this radio for them. You got um, four switches up on top, A, B, C, and D. A and D are two position switches, and B and C are three position switches. They're basic switches. They work, um, you know, pretty cheap. Uh, I think uh, this comes up as aux uh, one, two, three, and four. So you get four channels here, and then the four aux channels, so you get eight channels total. Power button on is here, so you just hold that for five seconds. And then it'll turn on. You get, a, uh, I believe, it'll, uh, if you have a bind with something, it'll turn solid uh, blue. It looks, <laughs> the colors are a little off in the camera, but yeah. Um, to bind, okay. So sorry. To turn it off first, you just hold the button again, and then it'll power off, and then the light will go off. And to bind, you want to press this button here to put it into bind mode. It'll be in bind mode for about 10 seconds at most. So I would suggest putting your receiver in bind mode first. And then, uh, obviously, the rid the radio powered on. Press and hold this button. You'll you'll see a flashing. I believe flashing blue light. It'll be in bind mode. And then, if your receiver's in bind mode, it'll bind. And then, once it's bound, it'll turn solid, and you'll know that you have a solid bind. You can bind this to multiple receivers. I have I have tested that. Um, there's nothing special you need to do to um, distinguish between the receivers. It'll just so each receiver just uh, looks at the transmitter ID and it gets stored in the receiver. So you can um, bind up multiple receivers to this one transmitter if you're wondering about that. Now this radio does come in four different versions. So you get a, um, a Bang protocol version, D16 FCC version, which is what this one is. 
D16 LBT version and a D8 version. So um, some people are saying that you could uh, change the protocol via software upgrade. I'm told that that is not true. There's some hardware inside here that differentiates the different versions. So whichever version you get, that you're pretty much stuck with that. Uh, but yeah, if you, uh, you know, there's four versions to choose from, so uh, choose the one that you think you'll be using the most. I think that this is going to be mostly for whoops, so I'm thinking D8 or D16 is going to be fine. Obviously, if you have uh, one of those um, silverware whoops that use the Bing protocol, then you're going to get the Bing version. Does come in mode 2, like I see, you see here, and also mode 1 with the throttle on the right side. Um, but uh, as of the time of this recording, I don't believe any mode 1 versions are currently for sale. It is $30 right now. I think the regular price is $40. I don't know if they're going to be making the price $40 later, but if you want to get one now, it is $30. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the OpenTX compatibility. It's very limited. It only runs on a special version of Open Companion 2.2.4. Uh, and the only thing that um, you can use it for is to calibrate the gimbal. So um, in the manual, it does explain how to do that. It's kind of complicated, so I just suggest reading the manual. But it's not too difficult. You do have to install their version of OpenTX Companion, which is 2.2.4. Other ones do not work with this radio. I did try that. And uh, you use that to calibrate the gimbals. And to do that, you have to power it up, press the setup button. Then we'll put this into a special mode where you can, when you plug it into your computer, it doesn't look like a joystick, basically. So then it will connect to that OpenTX Companion. You open up the radio, and then you can gen adjust the gimbal stick calibration because on my when it came out of the box all the other sticks when they were centered were fine except for the roll axis roll on mine was off it was like 1525 and needs to obviously be around 1500 so you have to you know, calibrate that in the open tx companion that's provided for this radio and that's the only thing that that open tx companion does for this radio beyond that there's nothing else at least at the time of the recording of this video who knows, additional functions may be provided later, but right now that's all it does. Okay, so yeah, that's about, that's about it for this uh, video. I'm going to go ahead and show you flight footage, of course, of me flying it at the end. Um, I definitely would recommend this one if you're a beginner and you have nothing and maybe want to get one of these, maybe the Meteor 65 as a whoop, and some, uh, some cheap goggles. You can definitely uh, get started with that. I'll put some of those down in the description if you're looking at getting a, a beginner kit. Uh, get this radio and a couple other things down in the description that'll get you started. B uh, BNFPV will be coming out with a a kit, a RTF kit with goggles and a, like a probably a Meteor 65 or something like that with this in there at some point in the future. But if you want to go ahead and get this radio now and put your own kit together, I can give you an idea of what they're going to be suggesting down the road. Um, and this will get you started. This is a perfect radio for that because these are actually... Mm, hobby grade gimbals, definitely on the, on the lowest end of the hobby grade gimbals that you can possibly get, but they are, are real gimbals and they're going to work and you're going to be able to fly really well with this and also uh, with the simulator support, you, which I, obviously you want to probably start there, get this, start with the simulator and then go and get your goggles and your Meteor 65 later, that would be a perfect start for this and hopefully the kit won't be too expensive. I kind of give them some ideas on what uh, pricing should be, and I think should, in order to be competitive, it's got to be kind of around where the Tiny Hawk RTF kit is. I think that's around 165 or 175, something like that. Anyway, it's going to do it for this video. Here's some flight footage, and if you got any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Alright, so... In a parking garage, see how far I can go down to the other end. You can see the RSI sign in the lower right. The other end of the garage here is 100 meters away. So far, so good. down here. Uh, let's see if I can go around to the other side of the garage here with all the concrete in the way. Uh, still working. Video is not so great. Getting RX loss. Oh, uh, looks like 
Yeah, I'm losing signal with all these uh, metal or concrete pillars in the way, but didn't fail safe. Coming back. It's not too bad. So I think if I was in an open area, I'd probably get a little better range, but I'm getting about 100 meters here. That's the max distance to the end of the parking garage. Uh, with a uh, clear line of sight here. When I got the uh, concrete pillars in the way, then my signal... Whoops, bounced off the ground. Down here, about 100 meters away, it's okay because I have clear line of sight. But with the concrete pillars in the way, then I get uh, arc loss and uh, basically lock up. I basically got lock up in the receiver. Alrighty.